Hello and welcome once again to our YouTube channel. My name is Ilya and today I'll give you some reasons of why you would want to learn an Elixir programming language in 2018. So first of all, let me briefly say a couple of words about the origins of Elixir. And one thing that you should know is that it works on Erlang virtual machine. And Erlang, in turn, is a language introduced by Ericsson company in 1986, and they developed it for telecom systems. But since then it has become a mature multi-purpose language. And one of its main benefits is, is of course, full tolerance and stability. Because, after all, you expect telecom systems to operate at all times and to support numerous of users simultaneously. And Erlang handles this task without any problems. As long as Alexa is built on top of Erlang, it shares the same features. And you might ask, however, why do we need Alexa if we well already have Erlang? And well, uh, because Erlang is not a very simple language and it is not very straightforward, shall we say. It might seem bizarre to some developers and Alexa in turn is much younger and it brings many new cool features for us. It was influenced by Ruby and programming with Alexa is much more comfortable than with Erlang. It provides nice syntactic sugar, the code is concise and more expressive. Developers' happiness is, of course, not the most important thing, but one should not forget about it as well. So what are the benefits of Alexa and why you might be interested in it? Well, first of all, as I've already said, this language, as well as Erlang, is concurrency-oriented. Well, everyone wishes for concurrency, of course, but in many languages it requires some efforts to implement it, but Alexa is different. It may handle numerous processes running in parallel without any hassle. You will see how natural it works with processes in Alexa without the need for any third-party libraries at all. And processes in Alexa are lightweight and isolated, meaning that even one process fails, all other can continue doing their job. Also, processes have very small execution windows, which means that some long-running process is not going to hang the whole system, which is, of course, really important. And on top of that, processes can communicate with the help of asynchronous methods. Messages. As I already said, Alexa runs on Erlang the virtual machine that is called BEAM or Bogdan Bjorn Erlang Abstract Machine. And so this VM handles the processes, uh, many, many, many more processes, uh, which are sometimes called units of concurrent execution. And we may have lots of processes which are in turn governed by special schedulers. And they are responsible for executing these processes. And uh, our virtual machine in turn may utilize these schedulers to execute various processes on different CPU cores. So the next feature in Alexa is fault tolerance. It has an interesting approach towards error handling, or that is called a let it fail. Of course, this language does have common constructs to catch errors, but it is more common to monitor your processes and perform some actions in case of their failure. And for example, you may reboot one process or uh, other processes, etc., etc., etc. And it is possible to build very complex supervisor trees with a little hassle. Another important thing is uh, that with Alexa, you have access to all the Erlang goodies. So you may even say that Erlang is a development platform, not just a language. Because out of the box it has technologies uh, like the following. For instance, it has a cross-platform framework, 
called Open Telecom Protocol or simply OTP and it allows you to build concurrent systems, perform error detection, recovery procedures, uh, it allows to package your code and more. Also, there are multiple storage options available and specifically there is an in-memory Erlang term storage or simply ETS. Also, there is a disk-based storage that is called disk ETS and well believe it or not there is even a no sql database management system that is called mnesia and you can use it right away without the need to install any additional tools at all which is cool as well and on top of that elixir presents its own tools for us and one of such tools is called hex which is a package manager and it's similar to NPM or RubyGems, for example. There are thousands and thousands of third-party packages that are available at hex.pm website and you may utilize them in your projects. Of course, the ecosystem is yet not that big comparing to, for instance, JavaScript or Ruby, but still there are quite a lot of useful solutions out there. And, uh, well, what's more, while learning Lexer, you will have an opportunity to look at software development from a different angle. And indeed, that's going to be an interesting experience as well. Because uh, many devs are used to object-oriented programming, but Elixir is different. It is a functional programming language, meaning that there are no classes, no inheritance, nothing like that. You have modules and you have functions. And what's even more, our data in Elixir are immutable, meaning that you can't destructively modify some string, for example. And if you need to do something about the string, then just produce its copy. And all in all, you may have many small functions that transform the data somehow without modifying the original. Data immutability is in turn is very important for concurrent systems because otherwise you cannot predict the state of your application, uh, of your data that multiple processes try to access. And also you are going to have a chance to work with recursion for quite a bit. Because you will find out that in Elixir there are no cycles at all. Everything is powered by recursion and in the end of the day it fits all your needs. Well, of course, Elixir does have high level functions like each, like map and others, but under the hoods they are still powered by recursion. And speaking about iterators, Elixir allows you to optimize them too. Specifically, there is an interesting concept of streams, which execute some operations in a lazy way. So suppose you have a range from 1 to say 1 million. And then you would like to use a map function and transform each number somehow. And after that, you would like to take a bunch of uh, first 10 elements from the resulting list. So, uh, well, if you are going to take only the first 10 elements, why do we even need to bother and apply our map function to all other elements of our range? And streams were created just for that. So you may say stream.map and the mapping will be done in a lazy manner. And then uh, you take the first 10 elements, stream is going to apply mapping only to those chosen elements, ignoring the others at all, which is going to greatly improve performance of this small uh, program. So how cool is that? By the way, ampersand 1 is uh, like a placeholder and it is going to accept each element from your range uh, on each iteration. So this is an example of valid Elixir code. You can see how concise it is. Uh, this strangely looking thing here, or a pipe and uh, angular bracket, it's called a pipe operator and it passes a result of one function to another. So that's well, really stylish, shall we say.
The last but not the least is the fact that Lexer does not come alone. Some years ago, an MVC web framework called Phoenix has emerged, and it boasts of the same features as Alexor and Erlang. So it is concurrent, it is fault-tolerant, scalable, which is very, very important these days. And some compare Phoenix to Rails, that also became very popular since its appearance in 2005. Some even say that Phoenix is going to drive downloads of Elixir, which is, I believe, is only partly true. After all, well, web development is in high demand these days, and developers are indeed seeking for scalability and fault tolerance. So, having learned Elixir, you may also tackle Phoenix and use it in your real-world projects. Uh, well, if you are starting to think, why don't I give this technology a go, then hesitate no more and start learning it today. Elixir official website has a nice introductory materials to help you make first steps in the world of functional programming. And you may find Elixir documentation at hexdocs.pm. And also I am preparing an in-depth course on Elixir that is going to be published on Edonix really soon, so stay tuned. Okay, so in this video we have discussed Elixir programming language and its core features, so hopefully you are eager to try this technology. Do you want me to cover more topics uh, related to Elixir, or would you be interested in learning this language? Uh, please share your thoughts in the comments section below. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel, because we publish new videos 6 days a week. And well, thank you for staying me today, happy coding, and until the next time.